Hello and welcome to another standard video. Today I'm very excited to present this white, red and green or Naya colored Legends deck that's built around a couple different cards. One of those is Annie Joins Up, a 4 mana legendary enchantment, deals 5 damage to a creature or planeswalker when it enters, and then from now on we get to double up on any triggered abilities from our legendary creatures, and our deck is filled to the brim with powerful legends whose enter the battlefield triggers and other triggered abilities we can now double dip on with Annie Joins Up. And then another build around is Fortune, a loyal steed, also a legendary creature. It's also a mount, so it does have the saddle mechanic. And this 3 mana 2 4 lets us scry 2 when it enters, so it can be a nice way to set up our next couple draws. Especially with any joins up, we now get to scry 2 twice, so we get to dig incredibly deep to make sure our next couple plays are relevant. And then whenever Fortune attacks while saddled, at the end of combat we get to flicker both Fortune and one of the creatures that saddled it. So we get to maybe re-trigger Fortune's Enter the Battlefield ability to scry, and we might have other creatures with powerful ETB effects that we now get to re-enable with Fortune. And ideally we also have any joints up in play to re-trigger everything twice, and that's where things get really out of hand. And then one of the creatures we wouldn't mind flickering with Fortune or trigger twice with any joints up is a Roxanne, Starfall Savant, which will make a meteorite token when it enters or attacks. So with either one of those triggers we get to make two meteorite tokens if we control our legendary enchantment, now dealing two damage twice to any target. And then as long as we control Roxanne, those meteorite tokens can tap for two mana as opposed to just one. Then we also have Dragonhawk, Fates Tempest, a 5-5 for Legendary Flyer, and when it enters or attacks we get to exile the top X cards of our library, where X is the number of creatures we control with power 4 or greater, and then we get to play those cards until our next end step, and for each card we didn't play we get to deal 2 damage to each opponent, so even if those cards can be played right away, we still get a bunch of damage out of them, and you can imagine if we have both Fortune to flicker Dragonhawk and any joins up to trigger it twice, we can just one hit KO the opponent without even needing to attack with the Dragonhawk, which is pretty great. And then topping off our curve, what better card than Itali Primal Conquer to play multiple cards from each player's library for free if we control Fortune to flicker it right away, or if we have any joins up on the battlefield. And then we can also transform it into the Primal Sickness to maybe poison the opponent to death if all the value is not good enough somehow. And then we also have a one-off Kogla and Hidaro to maybe fight multiple opposing creatures, can also give it haste to attack right away, but can also be discarded if we need to deal with some artifact or enchantment, and then we still get to draw a card as well. And then taking a look at our three drops, there's Muera, Trash Tactician, the only raccoon in the deck, but still a way to generate additional mana. If we expend four, we get to gain three life, can also be doubled by any joins up. And if we expend eight, we get to exile the top two cards of our library, and until the end of our next turn, we may play those cards. So it's a little bit different from Dragonhawk, where the cards go away end of turn. In this case, they will persist throughout our next turn. And with any joins up, we maybe get to exile the top four cards, so that can also provide a lot of value and make it so we can keep expending 8 turn after turn, and then a turn 3 Moira is still a way for us to get to 5 mana on turn 4, where we can cast cards like Roxanne and Dragonhawk. And then we've got two copies of Beza as a nice catch-up mechanism against aggro decks especially, as we maybe get to make fish tokens to stabilize the ground if our opponent controls more creatures, or gain life if we're behind on life total, can also draw cards if we're behind on cards in hand, or maybe make a treasure token if our opponent has more lands in play. So those can all maybe trigger several times if we have fortune or any joins up to double those. Although again, since this is kind of a catch-up mechanism, we're not super likely to trigger Beza a ton of times if we flicker it or trigger it twice. And then we also have two copies of Hugs, which lets us play an additional land each turn right away on a 5-5 Trampler, but we can also spend additional mana casting Hugs, in which case we get to exile the top X cards of our library, and until the end of our next turn we may play those cards, so similar to Muera's Expand 8 ability. And then to make sure we don't get run over by opposing aggro decks, we've got lots of early removal to keep up with all the monorad aggro decks that we might encounter on the best of one ladder, and I prefer playing these removal spells over playing maybe some ramp creatures to get these cards in place ahead of schedule, since against a deck like Monorad that can maybe combo kill you on turn 3, it's better to have removal than to be able to play your expensive cards a turn early. So we've got the full set of Torture Tower, exiling an opposing creature is quite relevant when facing the red aggro deck with cards like Heartfire Hero and Cacophony Scamp, which I've mentioned a few times by now. We've got a Lightning Helix, which can gain us life back, always useful. And then a Get Lost can destroy creatures, planeswalkers or enchantments, so we've got a few ways to deal with those in addition to Kogla 
blah. Whereas a Brotherhood's End can be a sweeper, dealing 3 to each creature and each planeswalker, or can destroy all artifacts with mana value 3 or less. Sometimes a little bit of a nombo with our meteorite tokens from Roxanne, but for the most part our deck has a lot of creatures that will survive the 3 damage, thinking of Fortune and Muera at 4 toughness, so we can let the opponent kind of overextend while still having some creatures in play to soak up damage, and then at some point we can wipe the board with Brotherhood's End while still having a solution to opposing artifacts like Orobrask's Forge, so it's nice to have the flexibility there. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much the entire deck. Our mana base has a nice mix of dual lands, a couple fast lands here like Copperline Gorge and Inspiring Vantage. We've got some pain lands, Battlefield Forge, Corpluzen Forest, and a brush land. And then I only have three copies of Fabled Passage to fetch up either two forest, two mountain, or a plains. The reason being we have a lot of double cost cards, double red for Brotherhood Sands, we need double white for Beza, double red, double green for hugs. So if we have too many basics on the battlefield, it can be difficult to cast multiple multicolored spells turn after turn. So I want to limit how many basics we end up having. So only three Fabled Passage and five basic lands, but it is still useful in a three color deck, of course. And then a couple surveillance here with elegant parlor to give us a bit more card selection and then I also like a couple creature lands. Restless Ridgeline has good synergy with Dragonhawk, as it can maybe pump up a creature before the Dragonhawk trigger resolves, so we end up with another four-powered creature if we grow Fortune or Moira, for instance, so that can also deal a lot of extra damage with a Dragonhawk in play. So yeah, that's our deck. Now let's jump in some games and see how the deck does. Okay, we're on the play. We've got what looks like a Keeper. Parlor looking for an extra land, most likely. Itali is a bit ambitious here. Three five drops is not ideal, but at least we've got the Helix to help out against aggro, as we see the turn one Hardfire Hero, which we can now Helix without taking too much damage. Challenger is going to be the target for Lightning Helix now. And another Helix to draw, not bad. And a Slick Shot's gonna be our new target. Can still wait for them to maybe commit a Pump Spell. So we'll Helix a Slick Shot and then we'll see Pump Spell on Hardfire Hero. Which could have been a reason to just take two damage. Since now we ended up taking three. Fortune's not bad if we can uh, draw an untapped land next turn to flicker Roxanne. And wow, got both a land 5 as well as an Annie joins up. I think I'm happy with both. Land first. And then I don't want to put Fortune in harm's way. Another Slick Shots we should be able to remove next turn, assuming there's no Monstrous Rage to give it extra toughness. Although even with Fortune now, we can flicker Roxanne to get two Meteorites. So step one, go for Slick Shots. That works. And then our opponent might have a way to trigger Valiant here, but that's alright. Opponent actually has the Lightning Strike for Roxanne, so we don't get to flicker it this turn, and then I may as well attack since Fortune will come back untapped. Alright, do we want a ridge line? Don't think so. Still keep any joins up. It's another removal spell, and plays quite well with our cards we have left. Challenger, do we see an attack? We do. So opponents presumably has a pump spell left. They're probably going to cast it to trigger Valiant. If not, we can mow down both creatures with Roxanne next turn. Yeah, let's go for it. Now if they enable Valiant and then find another spell they can cast, things could maybe get out of hand, but uh, I think we still prioritize a Challenger. Uh, shock goes face to enable prowess. So we'll successfully take out the challenger. And 
And now we've got two blockers for Hardfire Hero. And a Cogline Hidaro looks like a good top deck as well. Now we've got a bunch of extra mana from our meteorites, so we can start double spelling. Opponent passes, so yeah, this is going to be quite a blowout. Maybe start with an Annie joins up. Take out the Heartfire. And then I can play a Dragonhawk. Is it better than a hasty Cogland Yudaro? Yeah, with the fact that we doubled the triggers here, I think it's worthwhile. And then I can still maybe play a land out. And yeah, her opponent has seen enough. Attack, flicker, Dragonhawk to deal another 8 damage potentially. And if we don't win right now, we're certainly in a good spot to win next turn. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play. We've got a Keeper. Muera can maybe ramp out a turn 4 Roxane. And then Brother sends a good way to stabilize against aggro. Which red-white could be an aggressive deck, maybe red-white mice. Could also be the Boros token control deck, as we see Carrot Cake. So yeah, this is going to be a more grindy matchup. And I'm really hoping we can find a land to play Roxanne next turn. Otherwise, I guess Annie joins up. It's going to be our consolation prize. Not too many creatures out of the tokens deck that aren't tokens. So our removal is not at its best. And our land enters tapped, so wouldn't be able to quite play Roxanne here. But can set it up for next turn while gaining some life. Could see our opponent use a get lost on my enchantment. In which case we have a backup. Our opponent can still sank the carrot cake to make an extra token. But they're gonna torch the tower. And Elspa smite, yep, alright. Given that we have another Muera, not a disaster. But maybe we won't be able to play Roxanne now. Archangel Elspeth. We can also damage with the Brotherhood's End. And Annie joins up. Let's see. Also damages Planeswalkers, so could be another potential solution to it. As we draw another Muera. Yeah, I think I deploy the Tactician here, which sets up either Roxanne or maybe Brotherhood's End still. Our opponent does get lost our Tactician. So now Elspeth could ultimate, although it's not like they're returning much with it. So I think once again, play Tactician, and then now I get to explore as well. Do they have another get lost, maybe? Speaking of which... Could keep it on top to answer Elspeth directly, but with Roxanne and Brotherhood's End we should be able to keep it contained. I guess it also answers enchantments, so it's not a bad card to keep necessarily, if they get a Caretaker's Talent going. So maybe it's still worth it, even though I wouldn't mind an extra land. Boon can sack a token to Fountain Ports if they're planning to cast a board wipe maybe. Elspeth makes another 1-1. One, one. And do we get to untap? We do. Alright, so we can make 2 mana now. And then I think Roxanne is reasonable. Probably gonna see a Sunfall next turn to wipe my board. But I get to play Roxanne and explore with Muera once again. And this can just go after Elspeth. And we gain some life. If I go after the tokens, they would just sack them to Fountain Port to draw. I won't be intimidated. 
And then I don't want to explore with Roxanne because I might have a Lightning Helix to take it out. And then our land is perfect. Look for cards like Itali, Speak of the Devil. And do we attack? Yeah, I guess I might as well. Could see Trump plus Sack to Fountain Port to draw. Could see Block plus use a Burn spell to finish off Moira, but kind of expecting a Sunfall here. So our opponent's probably gonna cash in some of their tokens to draw first. So that happens. Opponent is gonna Lightning Helix Roxanne after all. So probably not gonna be Sunfalling anymore. And an Orbrask's Forge. So that's where Brotherhood's End destroying artifacts could come in handy, even though it blows up my meteorites. Yeah, I wanted to keep Get Lost for a Caretaker's Talent. Which, you know, we could still try here. Alternatively, what I could do is use Get Lost on Elspeth, and then Brotherhood's End will clean up all artifacts, including the uh, map tokens we just gave to our opponents. Which could be an okay solution. Alternatively, I just cast a tally and see what happens, and that's always fun with any joints up on the battlefield. Could lead to some uh, fun plays. So let's give that a shot. And then we're likely going to trigger Moira's second ability as well. Alright, let the fireworks begin. We hit the opponent's caretaker's talents, and Annie joins up, which can finish off Elspeth. And then we get one more Itali trigger. This time finding another talent and fortune, which can scry two twice. And let's see, Beza. Not gonna be at its best here. So we can maybe bottom those. Lightning Helix and a land. So I'm less likely to want a Brotherhood's End to destroy artifacts now, unless your opponent's Sun falls me next turn. I kind of want to cast a Get Lost just to trigger Muera, in which case land is fine to keep as something to exile. Lightning Helix, not that impressive. Now I guess what I could also do is Get Lost my own creature. Just to get the tokens to trigger Caretaker's Talents. Is that a genius move? Uh, sure. So let's go to Attackers. Attack with Moira. Since I'm kind of expecting a Sweeper anyway here. So we may as well prepare for it. By cashing in Moira for value. Opponent sacks to Fountain Port. So, yeah, I think I get lost Muera, since this would trigger before it's destroyed. We get to make tokens to draw off Caretaker's Talent, and we get to exile the top cards with Muera's ability. And then next turn we could cast another Atali. Oh yes. It's always fun when you get to play the opponent's strategy in a weird way. As it leads to some unconventional strategies. Probably want to keep one map token around as something we can copy with a caretaker's talent. Lightning Helix doesn't seem too necessary. So we can pass a turn. Still not too surprised to see a board wipe next turn, but yeah, now with double Caretaker's Talent, we don't have to worry about the opponent having one as much, and we can just start copying tokens to pull ahead. Our opponent did find their own copy at long last. So now I may be tempted to Brotherhood Send to destroy the forge, but uh, I also have my own artifacts I wouldn't mind keeping around. Get Lost Fortune. <laughs> Actually triggers my Caretaker's Talent again in the opponent's turn. 
So maybe your opponent's planning to mill us out by having us draw too many cards. Itali could also poison the opponent to death. But yeah, this one's going to be gone by the end of my turn. So I kind of want to cash it in while I can, especially with any joints up on the battlefield. So, step one, attack just to deal some trample damage. Could also play Roxanne so my meteorites make more mana. And then, let's see, five, five, six. I guess it would be a little bit short of casting the Itali afterwards. So, yeah, let's just start by attacking. Opponent takes it. And let's see what Itali number two has to say for us. How about another Itali and an Archangel Elspeth? Well, we're certainly going off here. Still need to keep an eye on my library so we don't get too much value at once. But it's not like our opponent's going to mill us out all of a sudden. So, still half of our library left. Just got to pace our threats in such a way that we don't overextend into a board wipe. And then somehow find ourselves without win conditions. But I don't think that's going to be the case. So Lightning Helix can go upstairs. And get lost. Can take out their talent. And then we've got another Itali trigger coming up. Brotherhood's End to destroy artifacts. Is that something we're interested in? Can float mana beforehand? Yeah, why not? So make some mana. Get rid of the forge and the carrot cake. Everything's gone. Resolve our Elspeth, which can make a token to draw with both talents. And we still have an Itali trigger waiting for us. Cast hugs. And a lockdown would just clear the opponent's remaining token, so sure. All right. Hugs lets us play an additional land out. Make a token with Elspeth. Draw two more cards. We're living the dream. And then I could play around Sunfall by not playing Fortune yet. But honestly, even if they do, we're probably in good shape. And then we get to Scry 2 twice. Kind of looking for Dragonhawk to just burn the opponent out. Another Brotherhood's End also can be terrible. And yeah, our opponent has seen enough, just too much value. So yeah, that's the Naya deck for you when it goes off. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play. We've got a Keeper. Brotherhood's End will catch us up against Aggro. And then Fortune can find land number four to curve any joins up into Roxanne, perhaps. And our opponent on Lizards. Can play a rich line. Okay, so Brothers End should be effective. Most of their creatures will top out at 3 toughness. Can maybe wait before casting it until our opponent commits more creatures to the board. And for now play Fortune, which will survive our 3 damage. Alright, Flame Cash Gecko. If they play a couple of those, I'll be tempted to cast my Sweeper. It's gonna be Gecko into Mentor. Yeah, I'm okay with Fortune if they remove it. We've got a backup now. And a Lightning Helix isn't bad. So I could keep Parlor on top since I could go Parlor Brotherhood's End next turn. And then Helix plus Fortune could be a good use of my 5 mana. So I think I keep both. I'm kind of assuming they have removal for Fortune. If not, we can hold off an attack. Opponent goes all out. I'll block the Mentor. They might have a Shock to finish off Fortune, but this way they don't get the additional card advantage from Fireglass Mentor. And it's going to be a Lightning Strike instead. Also would have been able to take out Fortune after we Brotherhood's end. And now I'm actually not forced to cast a Sweeper since 
there's no card draw engine that will pull the opponent ahead. Could just play any joins up, although now we don't have the guaranteed fifth land for Roxanne, since we know we're drawing a Lightning Helix. So I could play Fortune and play Parlor, but honestly I think we can just take over if I wipe the board right now. And then I'm still happy to keep Lightning Helix, since it answers any of their creatures. And Laughing Jasper is a good example of something we want to answer. So Fortune plus Lightning Helix looks good here. And a Dragonhawk's a good top deck. And then next turn I can play Roxanne and Flicker it, or play Dragonhawk and Flicker it. Maybe keeping the land afterwards could have guaranteed a land drop for a turn after playing Dragonhawk. But uh, yeah, Roxanne now looks even better. Take out a Mentor. Flicker Roxanne, and I don't think her opponent can realistically recover from this. And now we've got a ton of mana, so we can even cast any joins up and Dragonhawk in the same turn. And get even more value. And don't think we need either of those. Looking for a tally at this point. Another Mentor just dies to a Roxanne attacking. So yeah, this is pretty brutal. Take out Mentor, play Dragonhawk. I'm glad our opponent's sticking around to see this. Can still play a land for turn. Even though keeping it in exile would deal more damage. And now trigger twice. And go upstairs. And I guess I'll fetch here. Points at five, and they're just gonna die to Dragonhawk triggers. Look at all these triggers going on the stack. It's a thing of beauty. And these are both fine to keep, although we're gonna exile them with a Dragonhawk now. And uh, yeah, end turn. And that's how much damage. Quite a bit more than lethal. Sweet, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the play. We've got a keepable hand, I think. Brotherhood's End will have to do some heavy lifting to beat aggro. But it's going to be turn one island. Get a forest, even though it means I don't get to cast a turn two lightning helix. And then we're looking at fortune to scry into more lands. Boon seems to have the counter spell. So blue eye control is going to be a tougher matchup. Synthesizer points towards artifact build and uh, Brotherhood's End can destroy artifacts with mana value three or less. Now I could cast it right away or I could let the opponent maybe commit a few more artifacts to the board first and now we can wipe them all away. Could be risky if they have more counter spells. And Braided Nuts is acceptable. So, yeah, let's go with Roxanne. Even though I will blow up my own meteorites with the Brotherhood's End now. Can potentially cast an Itali next turn. And our opponent can use Braided Nut to keep Roxanne locked down. Another Synthesizer is what we like to see. Alright, so don't think I can wait on Brotherhood's End any longer. Otherwise, these uh, constructs threaten to just win the game next turn. Opponent looking at Braided Nut, they can also tap down my Meteorite, I suppose. Which is what they do. So take our draw step, and now I can still double spell Fortune and Brotherhood's End. 
So destroy artifacts, mana value 3 or less, please. And then play Fortune to Scry. And these are both decent, although my hand's already quite stacked. I guess if I put Hux first, I'll hit Beza with Itali. Since Hugs is better to just cast. Could also just look for another Brother's End, but there's not too many of those left. Opponent passes, so cast Itali. This might get countered. Nope, it resolves. And then saw blades and Beza may as well. So our opponent's likely sitting on a sunfall to wipe my board. So what's the best we can do here? Just get another Itali trigger to accumulate more value. Opponent lets us attack. They could also have their own saw blades, I suppose. For fortune, but the damage has been done, and there it is. So yeah, quite the turn here. Maybe should have played out my land first, in case Itali finds another Beza, so we're more likely to draw a card off of it. Our opponent does take out Roxanne after all. Itali comes back. Yeah, by scrying two first, I could have maybe set up my Itali a little bit better. This one I'll decline. But uh, I'll keep the Brother's End on top now. And then Get Lost doesn't seem needed. Synthesizer also let us scry. Alright, pass a turn. If we see a Sunfall, we just play another Itali. It's no big deal. And found a draw two and Muera. So both pretty good too here. And then Ridgeline could be okay as a creature threats. So we're back on the board. The more mana we have for hugs, the better. I guess our opponent does have a demolition field to blow up my creature line, potentially. And here I do want to watch out for the instant speed sweeper final showdown, which I've seen in some blue-white lists. So that's a reason to not spend too much in my first main phase instead attack. Uh, opponent kind of dies if they just try and animate their incubator. And then second main we can play hugs. Right, destroy evil, that'll work. And three steps ahead to copy the saw blades. Cannot stop that at instant speed. So sadly, that will work. So don't get the extra value from Wera by casting hugs for x equals 4 or more. But yeah, hugs for full amount here would be a 7. Seems good. Found the one land I can still play. And pass a turn. And then next turn we can get our any joins up going. Maybe burn the opponent out with rock sands. And our opponent packs it in. Sweet, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the play. We've got a pretty slow hand. No early interaction. So we're just kind of hoping to maybe draw some early removal and then hit our land drops up to 5 for Roxanne. Yeah, I don't think that's gonna work out most of the time. This is better. So, Torture Tower is gonna be great against Monored. Any joins up is good with Roxanne. So, 
Maybe I do still get rid of Torture Tower since we have Brotherhood's End to catch back up against aggro, even though sometimes exiling is a cleaner solution. But uh, I could buy this. And then... Maybe play Parlor, or I can wait to surveil until after we know what we're up against. Although then I'll have to deal with the tap land later. And I do know I need to draw into a land. So Lightning Helix has to go, I think. Opponent on the Hardfire Hero deck. So yeah, Torture Tower would have been great. Now I can just fetch Mountain, so I don't need to take damage when casting Brotherhood's End next turn, presumably. So ideally our opponent plays another creature out instead of pumping up the Hardfire. But they might do both. Right, just one damage. And a plotted slick shot, so... That's also where instant speed removal is much better than sorcery speed, Brotherhood's End, or joins up. Still getting my mountain. And then may as well Brotherhood's End. Since we picked up another one. So, yeah, not the start we were hoping for. If we actually had Lightning Helix and Torture Tower, we would have been in a much better position. So two more creatures for us to maybe take out here. Or I can just cast any joins up on Challenger. Problem there is that I'm not guaranteed to play Roxanne next turn, whereas if I go Copperline Gorge Brotherhood's End, I am. So I think that's still the better answer. And then we're hoping our opponent does not have a way to increase the slick shot's toughness. So we can take it out with a Roxanne. Otherwise we can always use any joins up. But yeah, they're potentially still holding a handful of pump effects. Wow, opponent just running out of cell swords, so they probably have another one in hand, and they're just missing a way to combo off with a slick shot. Well, now I'll run out to Roxanne. And then next turn we can double the attack trigger with any joins up. To feel really comfortable, I would still need to find some instant speed removal for the slick shots, so another lining helix or torch the tower would do. Right, opponent's committing. I think I take it, because losing Roxanne would be unfortunate when we have any joins up in hand. Can just double deal damage to the slick shot if it goes up to three toughness. But yeah, at 15 I could die, assuming our opponent has another Cell Sword. So yeah, if they have Monstrous Rage plus Cell Sword, I die since Cell Sword also triggers a Slick Shot one more time. If I block Swift Spear, opponent takes out Roxanne with a Pump Spell here, and then any joins up answers Slick Shots, and then we're both top decking. Maybe that's still the way to go. And Red Moss Ire. Okay, so we don't even take out the Swift Spear. And I get to take out my Meteorite token too, to rub salt in the wound. But uh, yeah, we can clear a slick shot at least, so... We're now both in top deck mode, and our top decks should be more impactful. But we are at 11, and a Swiss Spear is hitting us. Still kind of think our opponent has a Cell Sword in hand, given that they didn't save the other one. And yeah, another slick shot, so now we're at 9. Opponent can deal 3 damage to us with a cell sword. Well, that's not a bad draw. Wipe their board. Do I keep a land in hand, maybe to bluff some more interaction? Beza can be a reason to play out my lands. And our opponent did indeed have another cell sword, decides to just run it out. And I could Lightning Helix it now. Or maybe wait till beginning of combat in case I top decked another slick shot. Don't want it to attack, because then our opponents could use Dreadmoss Ire to get it up to 4 toughness. So I do have to Helix before they turn the Cell Sword sideways. So we're back up to 12, and now we're just waiting for one of our big payoffs. I'll use Fabled Passage to thin out the deck. And yeah, opponent packs it in. Awesome, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the play. We've got a good hand against aggro. Could use more top ends to eventually take over against other mid-range decks. 
but I uh, can't say no. Opponent red black with theater, so unlikely to be hyper aggro and are pretty likely to see some removal spells, so don't expect to keep Muera in play for long. Opponent on Junt colors and green as well. So it's going to be a pretty grindy battle. And the hand is currently not very well set up for it. Opponent surveils again. And puts Galta in the graveyard, so this might be a reanimator deck. Don't have any real graveyard hate. And once again, our hand's not doing much. So, probably going to see a reanimation spell on turn 5. Invasion, another discard outlets. So next turn they can maybe reanimate and give haste with Bitter Union. So if they have enough big creatures to reanimate with Galta, we're just dead. And there's not much we can do about it. Alright, Roxanne was a decent draw, but I don't think it's going to be good enough to save me here for opponents got the combo. So, can play Roxanne. Trigger Moira, gain some life. It is possible that staying back with Moira can maybe save me, since we can soak up for damage. Although I also don't see how we deal with the 12-12 once it's in play. Can only deal 9 damage to it. I guess maybe 2 more from Roxanne. I think I'd get in for 2. The damage could matter. Alright, time for the big finish here. Can we bring back a Galta? And it looks like it's the Fossil Eyes. So they even get to explore. And yeah, what creatures can you put in play? It looks like a lot of dinosaurs. And then the leftover mana to activate Bitter Union. We see Carnosaur and Hatcher. So the opponent's going off. And then another Hatcher of Carnosaur, which they were able to set up. Yeah, pretty sweet. Turn two eggs into dinosaurs. Now, Brother's End doesn't look bad, although it just doesn't deal with Galta, and I'm pretty sure we just die here. So, yeah. Cool combo from our opponent. They didn't really seem to interact a whole lot. I guess we do see Brother's End as a way for them to maybe survive opposing aggro decks. But yeah, in a meta with a lot of monorad aggro that can win on turn three, you do need to have enough early interaction to stand a chance. Jeez. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play with a fine hand. Got our early interaction, and then Annie into Roxanne could be a nice curve. Facing red aggro. Alright. So we'll wait for the opponent to make a move to then Lightning Helix, the Hardfire Hero. If they play a 2-drop, we can take that out instead. And this is why I prefer running cheap removal spells as opposed to playing some 2-mana ramp cards, even though it could speed up the curve of 2-drop into Annie into Roxanne. The reality is that you usually need the early interaction to stay alive against Monorads, otherwise they're just gonna combo kill you. And Moira was a decent pickup. Don't think I'll be able to block the Hardfire Hero, but it can eventually gain additional life back as well. So we'll take it. A Monstrous Rage on Swiss Spear. And then they might have another way to target the Hardfire Hero with a Might of the Meek. Surprised I didn't put the roll token on Hardfire Hero since it can deal damage on the way out. But uh, yeah, still a lot of damage coming across. Alright, so we can make a mana with Moira. And I think we just play Roxanne now, taking out Hardfire. And then next turn I can Annie joins up to take out the Swiss Spear. We also gain life with Moira. And I could attack for two, I'm just gonna hang back. 
don't necessarily need the mana next turn to cast any joints up. More important that Roxanne survives. But uh, I think I still take it. There's a chance we could just die here by taking it if our opponent has a couple pump spells and a Callous Cell Sword. But if I chump and then they remove Roxanne, I'm left with nothing. So if I just can survive this one turn, we should be in good shape. Opponent just deals two damage. Has another Heartfire hero. And Brotherhood's End also looks great. And our opponent packs it in. Can play any joints up to double the attack trigger from Roxanne. And pretty much mow down the opponent's entire board. Alright, so we got to see our Naya Legends in action. And this deck certainly delivered. I got to see a lot of awesome turns with any joints up doubling our triggers. We got to flick our creatures with Fortune. Even just a Scry 2 from Fortune proves to be quite valuable in a deck that sometimes is looking for specific threats or answers. So getting to Scry 2 twice with any joints up is already quite good. But then, of course, whenever we got to combo off with Itali and our Annie joins up doubling the triggers, things got really ridiculous. So, yeah, a lot of fun. Seems like it has a chance against all the aggro decks thanks to the early interaction. So it's pretty well set up for the current best of one meta. But every now and then you might run into a combo deck where your spot removal is not particularly useful and the opponent can just go off like we saw with the reanimator deck. So you will come across matchups like those that are more difficult. But in general, I've been liking this deck so far on the ladder, and it's a lot of fun to play as well, which is probably the most important thing. So that'll do it for today's gameplay. Wanna thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day.